Strawberry Frappuccinos in a Black Leather Jacket Chapter 7 Misunderstood Messages Written and narrated by Eleanor Rose Art by Marlene Bruce Adrian woke up that night to the buzzing of his phone. Reaching for it blindly, he winced as the light hit his face. He groaned as his phone told him the time. Three in the morning. It better not be Nino. Adrian, it's Alia. Hey, so I was thinking that Nino was kind of cute and I'd like to get to know him better. Do you have his number? I'd like to buy him a drink. Adrian had to blink his eyes into focus as he processed the text. Alia? Interested in Nino? He hadn't seen that one coming. Nino was great and all, but he hadn't met a girl that would put him first yet. He tends to only attract women who wanted to use him as a meal ticket or to get closer to one of his friends. As he thought about it more, Alia might be good for him. Oh, for sure. Don't worry, I won't tell him. You can do that part, Adrian typed. I'll send you his contact file now. He heard the message swoosh as he sent Nino's phone number to Alia. He hoped it worked out for them. He set his phone back down and rolled over, knowing it wouldn't be long until he fell back asleep. Adrian could have sworn it had only been a few minutes when the phone buzzed again. He figured it was Alia thanking him, so he ignored it, but it buzzed two more times in the following five minutes. A tad grumpy that he wasn't allowed to fall back asleep, Adrian grabbed his phone to say goodnight to Alia and put his phone in airplane mode. To his surprise, it wasn't Alia who messaged him. It was Ladybug. Adrian shot up in his bed, surprised that Chloe was messaging him this early in the morning. Contrary to what he first thought, it was now 5 a.m. and he would be getting up in an hour anyway to open the cafe. She was probably about to release a new design and wanted to stir up excitement by flirting with Cat Noir on Twitter for all of France to see. To his surprise, it wasn't a tweet. It was a direct message. Which was weird, because Ladybug never sent Cat Noir something privately. Cat? It was just one word, his name, but that's all it took for Adrian's heart to beat faster in his chest, reminding him that he was alive and existing in the very same moment as Ladybug. He tapped his screen to open the entire conversation. Are you there? Never mind. It's pretty early, isn't it? Don't worry about this when you read it. It's not a big deal. Adrian opened his keyboard and started typing as quickly as he could. Hey there, Bugaboo. What's up? I didn't realize ladybugs were early risers. He stared at his phone in anticipation, wondering if his lady had already left. A minute passed, and his phone buzzed in his hand. Have you ever been heartbroken before? Adrian stared at his phone for a moment to process the sentence. Chloe wasn't about to break up with him, was she? He hoped not. I haven't been heartbroken before, he typed. But I've had unrequited feelings. Does that count? Adrian lay still in his bed, waiting for her response. He never really got to talk about emotions with anyone, so it was a bit strange to do it with Ladybug. Especially not in person. How did you get over it? Adrian tapped his phone to his chin, contemplating how to answer. In his case, he ended up meeting his crush in real life and started dating her. But before that, all of the girls he looked at were cute, but nothing special until Ladybug. Funny enough, he had fallen for her without knowing what she looked like. I never did, he typed. 
It wasn't a lie, after all. He was still head over heels for the girl. Oh. I'm sorry, Cat. She's sorry? What did that mean? Did she consider heartbreak a necessary part of life to go through, or...? Adrian's blood ran cold. Was Chloe planning on breaking up with him? Is that why she wanted to know? To see if he could handle her breaking his heart? Adrian's hands shook as he tried to type a reply. He typed and deleted three different responses before sighing and putting down the phone to give himself a minute. This wasn't happening. Was it the strawberry picking? Him working too many hours? Her dislike of Nino? He wouldn't put it past Chloe to break up with him on Twitter. Hey, Chloe. We need to talk. He typed, texting her as Adrian. He laid back down on his bed, closing his eyes despite knowing he wasn't going to get any more sleep. He replayed the events of the last week behind his eyelids, looking for a sign to show him why Chloe would want to break up with him. A few more minutes dredged on before his phone buzzed again. Adrian slowly brought his phone back to his face, scared of the response he'd get. Have a good rest, kitty. Sorry for bothering you. It was Ladybug. Cat Noir hadn't responded to her. Was that Chloe's response to the text sent through Twitter? Something wasn't adding up. Don't worry about it, my lady. Adrian hesitated before continuing. Did some alley cat break your heart, Ladybug? Don't you worry, Tomcat. I'm just thinking too hard. I'm going back to bed. Adrian wondered what Chloe's schedule was like for the day. She still hadn't responded to his text, and he did take a rain check on lunch with her the other day, so he decided he'll leave his shift early to bring her sushi for lunch. Why have the perks of being an assistant manager if you can't use them, after all? Rest well, my lady. I'm always ready to talk. Adrian put his phone down and got up to take a shower. It was time for his day to start. Chloe, like any other day, woke up at 7.30 to the hotel chef setting down a bowl of yogurt topped with fruit and honey, as well as a flute of orange juice on her table. She rolled out of bed, grabbed her phone, and sat down to start her breakfast after requesting an egg to go with her meal. She flipped through her phone, answering some texts from her classmates and Sabrina, then went to Bay to answer Adrian's usual Good morning, beautiful text. Except there was no Good morning text today. Hey, Chloe. We need to talk. Sent 5.06 a.m. Chloe just about choked on her orange juice. Something was wrong. Adrian would never foreshadow something, even though she would. He wasn't the type of person to use what is possibly the most anxiety-prone sentence in all the world unless if he had a good reason to. She thought about what it could possibly be about. The strawberry date? Her ignoring his requests to hang out with Nino? Her spending too much time at school and in the design studio? She knew he wouldn't break up with her over text, which made it that much more ominous. Her blood ran cold when the thought came to her. Her hands shook as she went to the ladybug Twitter to see if the owner posted anything. There was nothing new, so Chloe allowed herself to relax a bit. He probably didn't know about the misunderstanding. She was safe. Chloe felt bad for deceiving him the last six months, but it was a true miscommunication. She was Ladybug, but not the Ladybug he thought she was. She had thought it strange how he suddenly said yes to going out to dinner with her one day instead of finding a polite way to brush her off all those months ago, 
but she didn't realize he thought she was the ladybug designer until they had been official for five months. It was too late to back out then. Not after learning what it felt like to have Adrian Agress treat her like a queen. And not just because she's the daughter of Paris. Not after seeing how Adrian looks at her like she's his whole world. She felt her throat start to close. She was having a panic attack. It wasn't the first time she had come close to a panic attack in the last month. Whenever she thought of Adrian leaving her because she wasn't his ladybug, Adrian hating her because she wasn't his ladybug, she shut down. Chloe didn't want to lose him, but the misunderstanding wasn't her fault. And even if he found out that she wasn't the ladybug designer, he might not leave her. Not after six months of dating and a lifetime of knowing each other. Right? She knew she should come clean, and she almost told him a few times, but Chloe always ran away at the end. What if he left her? Adrian was her world ever since she was four years old. He was the one who stood between her and that big dog when they first met because his daddy told him to protect her while he met with her father. He was the one who made her a flower crown and called her his queen when her father was away on business for four months when she was five and felt abandoned. He was the one who, after she got stung at six years old, brought her honey in a bottle shaped like a bear so she wouldn't be scared of bees anymore. He was the one who helped her practice and made a big sign for her when they were seven and she had to sing the French anthem at the Coup de France finals. He was the one who made the pinky promise to marry her when they were eight. Although he didn't realize it, her entire life surrounded him. It always had. The little things, like him carrying her on his back when her heel broke, or surprising her at school to take her on a date, made her love him that much more. Chloe stopped breathing at her last thought. Love. She always assumed that she loved him, but the feelings behind that sentence were different than she was used to. It wasn't the childhood best friend emotion. It was different. Chloe started to laugh, fighting back tears. She couldn't believe it. She always assumed that she was in love with Adrian. But if this is what love feels like, it's a much deeper emotion than her younger self could have possibly imagined. When did my feelings get this intense? Chloe thought to herself. When did she fall in love? The tears she'd been fighting back bubbled over and, for the first time in a long time, Chloe started to sob. It was just like her to realize that she loved Adrian the day he was going to break up with her. Her entire life she'd been handed everything, but by the time she loved it, they were on the way out. The yellow high heels from last year, her favorite lipstick that got discontinued. Her father, whose business trips always seemed to come last minute when she had a class presentation. She opened the timer app and set it for three minutes. She would let herself go for three minutes and then face the day. Chloe threw herself on the bed and, when the chef came in with her egg, dismissed him. She heard the timer go off and thought about hitting snooze and taking a day off. It was tempting because these newly found feelings, love and heartbreak, were overwhelming. But she didn't give in. She was a bourgeois, after all. Bourgeois didn't let anything stop them. Wiping away her tears, she got up and went to her vanity to put on her makeup. When she was almost done, she looked at her bottom drawer a look of debate on her face. She opened it and pulled out her favorite discontinued lipstick that expired years ago and only had a few applications left. She opened it, applying it to her lips. 
She needed a good luck charm today. When she was done, Chloe grabbed her phone and called her father. Daddy, she said, I need you to send your best IT nerd up here. I've got a problem. A few minutes later, a skinny guy with black framed glasses showed up at her suite. Hey there, my name's Max. What do you need help with? He asked. Hey Max, I need you to hack into Twitter for me. Max recoiled at her request. She could tell he thought she was crazy. Twitter? As in the American social media site? <laughs> yes. Not the whole site, just one account in particular. Can you do that? Uh, Max thought about it. If it's just an individual account, then yeah, I can crack a password, but it's highly illegal. Listen, listen, Chloe sighed. If you get in, I'll double your pay. If you tell anyone, I'll get you fired and find a reason to send you to prison, okay? Well, if you put it that way, then yes, I can. Good. I need you to hack this account. She handed him a piece of paper with a username on it. He stared at it in bewilderment. Why? Don't ask questions. Chloe barked. Just do your job. And with that, she grabbed her purse and walked out, leaving Max to stand awkwardly in her suite. There was no way she was letting go of Adrian. Not without a fight. End of chapter. Keep listening for a sneak peek at next week's part. Chapter 8 Sneak Peek. Breakfast and a Date. Master Fu shows up to breakfast at the cafe, and Nino asks one of the girls out. Also, Adrian's there, and Alia's sure Marinette's flustered because of it, even though she doesn't show it.